Good morning, dear learner. Uh, today we have Dr. Murlidhar Maji, uh, Assistant Professor at GM University. He will be handling our uh, hard block of statistical methods, and then here he will be covering the hypothesis testing and various uh, tests such as chi-square test, f test, etc. Without taking much of your time, I would invite sir to deliver his session. Welcome, sir. So, Dr. Asis Das, sir, and uh, good morning to all the learners of this session. So, Good morning, dear learners. Thank you, Das, sir. Uh, Today's session is hypothesis testing, the meaning, the type of hypothesis, how to frame a hypothesis, what is the significance level, how to choose a test statistic, suitable test statistics, so the significance level, error in hypothesis testing, then large sample testing, and uh, relating to testing of the variance ratio, that is your app test, chi-squares test. And this is how this session has been planned to cover up within this time limit. So dear learners, first of all, you tell me, are you, am I audible? Please say yes or no. Please give your answer through the text. Am I audible? Okay. So what is the hypothesis? The other name suggests hypothesis. Hypothesis consists of two yes. words. One is hypo, another is thesis. Hypo means below or less than. Thesis means well-established dictum or truth. So this consists of two words. So hypothesis is a logical statement, which is nearer to truth. You see the structure of this particular line. Hypothesis is a logical nearer to truth. Nearer to truth means which is not absolutely true. It is to be tested. It is to be found out whether it is true or not. In other words, we can say hypothesis means it is below the level of established truth, which is to be proved or disapproved. This is the exact meaning of hypothesis. Another point, dear student. Another point, what is the meaning of hypothesis? For example, I will say a particular drug cures 80% of tuberculosis patients. If I say like that, then whether the drug is actually curing tuberculosis or not, that is to be tested. So the line that I told you, that is my tentative proposition of a fact. Or I can say it is a hypothesis. It is not true. It is nearer to true. That's why I have told like that. A particular drug cures 80% of tuberculosis patient. Whether it is true or not, whether my statement is true or not, we have to collect the data. We have to collect sample data from the population. We can collect the data from the society. Then we will see whether the particular statement is true or not. So hypothesis, it is not absolute truth. Rather, the logical statement, first of all, which means or which is nearer to truth which is to be tested and at the end that particular statement to be proved if it is proved it will be accepted or if it is not proved it might be rejected so technically speaking got the point dear student so what is the hypothesis write down a particular line technically hypothesis is a write down please 
technically hypothesis is a tentative conclusion logically drawn about a population parameter i repeat technically hypothesis is a tentative conclusion logically drawn about a population parameter so we can approve of this hypothesis through testing and that testing is called as hypothesis testing so hypothesis testing is nothing but it is examining the formulated hypothesis about the population from which sample is drawn what does it mean dear students i told you 20% of the students of economics are 20% of the student of economics of osu who are studying in pg economics they are spend thrift in nature some of you said sir i am not spend thrift i spend very majorly if you say like that then you are deviating from my statement so to prove my statement we have to collect the data where we have drawn the sample on the basis of which i have given a statement and at the end we will test that statement and if it is near up to the truth my statement or the hypothesis will be accepted and if there is a very high difference or more difference between the actual truth and my hypothetical statement if there is a more difference then my hypothesis will be rejected it will not be accepted this is the essence of hypothesis testing so why will go for hypothesis testing because by collecting data from the sample and on the basis of the data collected through the sample we make a statement and within shortest possible time we try to predict it for the entire universe that, that is the purpose of collecting sample and making prediction after that whether my statement is true or not we have to test it how to test it we have to collect the data we have to test it through certain statistical formula and after testing through statistical formula then we will arrive at a decision whether my statement is true or not if my statement is true it will be accepted otherwise it will be rejected that statement before collection of the data before making up any test that particular statement is called as a hypothesis which is nearer to truth but not absolute truth not true in actual sense that's why it is to be tested and it is to be tested through certain statistical formula this is the introduction to statistical hypothesis or hypothesis testing so to test the validity of hypothesis we gather sample data determining the difference between hypothesized value and actual value of the sample mean the smaller the difference more reliable is the hypothesis if there is or if the difference between hypothesized statement and the actual result that we gather from the field if it is lower then my hypothesis will be accepted and if the difference is larger hypothesis will be rejected and we can say that the difference is or the difference between hypothesized value and the actual value gives us the level of significance okay dear students so there are two types of hypothesis whatever i told you you got this point or not please tell me are you following my point or not please say through the text yes or no please say yes or no okay so basically there are two types of hypothesis one is null hypothesis denoted by h0 another is an alternative hypothesis 
denoted by H1. So your H0, it is your null hypothesis. And HA, or I can write down H1, it is your alternative hypothesis. What the point? So basically, there are two types of hypothesis. One is null hypothesis denoted by H0. Another is alternative hypothesis denoted by H1. So how to write down the hypothesis? I told you, a given antibiotic cures 80% of the patient. This is a hypothesis. Here the data is to be collected and that data to be tested at the end, we have to arrive at a conclusion and that particular statement to be accepted or rejected depend upon, depends upon our analysis. Similarly, I can say another hypothesis also. The average weight of fish, you see, the average weight of fish reared in a research laboratory is 2.6 kg. This is a statement, this is a hypothesis. This is how you can write down hypothesis. So what is the null hypothesis then? What is the null hypothesis, dear students? You see, null means negation. It is the negation or neutral type of hypothesis. It is the negation or the neutral type of hypothesis. What is negation? Just you have to put not. The average height of the students of PG economics of OSU is 163 centimeter. This is a hypothesis. If I want to write down null hypothesis, the average height of the students of PG economics of OSU is not 163 cm. So this is a null hypothesis. So we can write down null means negation is there or it is a neutral type of hypothesis a neutral type of hypothesis denoted by H0. So whenever I will write down in my calculation H0, that is a null hypothesis. It says that. What it says? What is the, what is the meaning of this null hypothesis then? I told you how to write down a null hypothesis. Then what is, what is the meaning of this null hypothesis? It says us that. This is very crucial, dear student. It says that there is no difference between sample value and hypothesized value. Please write down this line. There is no difference between sample value and the hypothesized value. That means the difference is negligible. Initially, you see this particular statement. Initially, we assume that the null hypothesis is true. Initially, we assume that the null hypothesis is true. Then we have to test it, okay? I told you one hypothesis that the average weight of fish reared in a research laboratory is 2.6 kg. How to write down the null? You see here, H0, I can write down 2.6 kg. H0 is equal to 2.6 kg. This is my null hypothesis. That means, the average weight of fish is 2.6 kg. Whether it is true or not, that is to be tested. I have to collect the data. I have to test the data. Then I have to arrive at the conclusion whether actually on an average the weight of fish is 2.6 kg or not. If it is nearer to 6 kg, then a hypothesis will be accepted. If it is 1 kilo, 1.5 kilo, there is, a lot, there is more difference, then this null hypothesis will be rejected. So what is the null hypothesis then, dear students? It is a type of hypothesis. It is a neutral type of hypothesis. It is a neg negation, or you can say that there is no difference between the sample value and the hypothesized value. Technically speaking, initially, null hypothesis is assumed to be true. This is your null hypothesis. Then what is alternative hypothesis? What is alternative hypothesis? Actually, the reverse of the null hypothesis is alternative hypothesis. I told you there are two types of hypothesis. So if that, if that statement is not null, then it is alternative hypothesis. So what is, hypothesis, what is alternative hypothesis then? The hypothesis, write down this line, alternative hypothesis, write down this line. The hypothesis concluded to be true. The hypothesis concluded to be true if the null hypothesis is rejected. 
if the null hypothesis is rejected, then other hypothesis which is there, for example, I told you H0 is equal to 2.6 kg. It is rejected. That means what? The average weight of his reared in the research laboratory is not 2.6 kg. It is other kilo, other weight. That's why I can say alternative hypothesis is concluded or the hypothesis concluded to be true. If the null hypothesis is rejected, we say it as an alternative hypothesis and denoted always by H1 or HA. Whenever I write down HA, that is also one alternative hypothesis. Got the point, dear student? Okay. Now, how to write down a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis? For example, I'm giving you another example. If the average height of the soldiers is 162 centimeter, then the null hypothesis, how to write it down? How to write it down? H0, that is mu is equal to 162 cm. What is mu? The average. This is my null hypothesis. So I'm writing down null hypothesis in this way. If null hypothesis is 162 cm, I'm writing like that. What will be the alternative hypothesis? Alternative hypothesis, dear students, I can write down here H1, that is alternative hypothesis. If it is mu, then it is mu A, or I can write down H1. So this will be equal to 162 cm. This can be like this, or it can be mu A, or this can be greater than 162 cm, or it can be less than 162 cm. Sorry, this will be mu. Okay, this is H1. So it can be equal to 162 cm. It can be greater than 162 cm. It can be lesser than 162 cm. Dear students, following me or not? Are you following my point or not? Please write down. Please tell me. Give your thumb impression. Okay, then what is the relationship between this null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis? How to write it down? I told you, this is how we can write down null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Then we have to see the relation between the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. You see here, dear student, be careful about this. If mu is equal to mu zero, this implies that if mu is equal to mu zero, Null hypothesis. Then what will be the alternative hypothesis? Alternative hypothesis will be mu will not be equal to mu zero. Secondly, if the null hypothesis is like this, suppose it is less than equal to mu zero, then your alternative hypothesis will be like this: mu will be greater than mu zero. There is only one option left, so this will be your alternative hypothesis. Another thing is, if the null hypothesis is like this, then your alternative hypothesis will be mu will be less than mu zero. This is how we can write down the relationship between the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. H0 is null and H1 is your alternative hypothesis. Okay? Write down two lines, dear students. If the null hypothesis is rejected, please write down, I repeat, if the null hypothesis is rejected on the basis of sample observation, if the null hypothesis is rejected on the basis of sample observation, then alternative hypothesis will be accepted. Okay, the second point, if the null hypothesis is not rejected, if the null hypothesis is not rejected, then it is true. So hypothesis, so hypothesis testing has two conclusions. So hypothesis testing has two conclusions. Be careful about this, dear students. What is the conclusion? They reject x0 or fail to reject 
x zero. Okay, dear student, reject x zero, reject the null hypothesis, or fail to reject x zero. Means what? We are accepting the null hypothesis. These are the two conclusions that we have to arrive at the end. Should I move further, dear student? Okay. So let me write down. Let me say about setting of a suitable significance level. What is significance level? These are all introductory part. Setting of a suitable significance level. What is significance level? It is denoted by alpha. It is denoted by alpha. Okay, dear student. What is the meaning of significance level? You see, the confidence with which. Please write down this line also. The confidence with which an experimenter rejects. I repeat, the confidence with which an experimenter rejects or retains a null hypothesis. Retains means. R E T A I N S accept the confidence with which an experimenter rejects or retains a null hypothesis depends upon the significance level. Depends upon the significance level. I will tell you what is the exact meaning. Usually, the customary significance level are. Five percent. I can write down alpha is equal to zero point zero five. Five percent means this, and one percent. Alpha is equal to zero point zero one. The customary significant level are five percent, one percent, ten percent, and so on. What is the meaning of this? Here, what the kind of? You listen to me, dear students. If it is If it is five percent level of significance, see to the blackboard, dear student. If it is five percent level of significance, what does it mean? It means five out of hundred are likely to correct, likely to reject a correct at zero. Let's go. Write down, please. If it is five percent level of significance. This means five out of hundred are likely to reject a correct at zero. Okay. This means this means what is the meaning of this? This means ninety five percent we are confident that our decision to reject at zero is correct. I repeat. This means if there is the level of significance is five, that means ninety five percent we are confident that our decision to reject the null hypothesis is correct. So, dear students, before generally testing a particular data or a hypothesis, we say whether our test of hypothesis or whether the level of significance to be I percent or one percent, it is predetermined. I repeat, that means level of significance is fixed before applying the test. Usually, in social science, we go for five percent and five percent, one percent, and to some extent, we also use ten percent level of significance. But in physical science, like physics, chemistry. <laughs> Please mute your audio. Mute your audio. Please mute your audio. So Sir. my voice will be audible to you. Okay. What I told you, the level of significance is fixed before applying the test. Generally, in social science, we go for five percent, one percent, one percent, five percent. And maximum to ten percent. But in physical sciences like physics, chemistry, or in engineering, 
the level of significance is one percent. Okay, dear students. So this is how we can say about the significance level. Then, how to establish a critical or a rejection region? So the yes, it I can write down here. Establish, establish critical or the rejection region. Okay, R E G I O N. Okay, dear students, please write down some line. The area under the sampling distribution curve of test statistic. I repeat, I'll try to coach it. The area under the sampling distribution curve of. <laughs> Okay, what we are going to read now, we are going to how to establish a critical or rejection region in test of hypothesis. So please write down two lines here. This is very crucial. The area under the sampling distribution curve of test statistic is divided into two mutually exclusive region. It's divided into two mutually exclusive region or area. Those two regions are acceptance region and the rejection or critical region. So there are two regions. Under a sampling distribution curve. Okay? One is acceptance region. Very crucial, dear students. Otherwise, you cannot solve the numbers here. You cannot solve any problem unless you have a very clear understanding about the basic of hypothesis testing. That's why I am telling you very clearly. There are two regions. One is acceptance region, and the second is the rejection. Or critical region, the rejection or critical region. There are two regions. So how to show it? You see the normal distribution curve here. Okay. So I can write down in this way. I can write down in this way. So this will be. H zero, this particular part, reject H zero, this particular part, reject H zero. Okay, or I can write down it is your rejection region. This is your rejection region, and this particular part that is your. Acceptance region. Okay, dear student. If it is alpha or alpha by two, because two parts are there, so I can write down this part is one minus alpha because the total area is one. So I can write down in this way that is your acceptance region, and here mu is equal to mu zero. Are you my, are you following my point, dear students? Here I can show you the acceptance region, and here I can here I have shown you the region of rejection or rejection region where we will reject the H zero. H zero means the null hypothesis. Got the point, dear students? You see here, what is the purpose of drawing this particular sample distribution curve and showing the region of rejection and acceptance, dear student? If the sample statistic, you see, this is very crucial. If the sample statistic fall in acceptance region, if the sample statistic fall in acceptance region, the null hypothesis is accepted. Otherwise, it is rejected. I repeat, if the sample statistics Fall on 
acceptance region. The null hypothesis is accepted, otherwise rejected. What does it mean? It is the simple statistic that separates the region of acceptance and region of rejection. What is the point? It is the value of the sample statistic. You can write down this line. It is the value of sample statistic that separates the region of acceptance and the region of rejection. That value is called critical value. That value is called critical value. Okay, dear students. Should I move further? Please show your thumb. Please show your thumb impression. Are you following my points or not? Okay. Then, how to choose a suitable test statistic? Dear student, sometimes everybody also asks question, if you are reading about test of hypothesis, which type of test that you are using? They will ask you. Which type of test means? It is a parametric test or non-parametric test. There are basically two types of tests. Some tests lie under the group of parametric tests. Some types of tests lie under the group of non-parametric tests. What is a parametric test? Listen to me carefully. Because you may face this type of question, objective type question in the examination. So what is a parametric test? If or a parametric test or a test become parametrics where there are certain assumptions and those assumptions are like assumptions of normality assumptions of random probability this is point number two and point number three is normally distributed population having equal variances what is variance square of the standard deviation what is the standard standard deviation how a particular value is different from the mean value of a series. That is a standard deviation. This is a dispersion value. So the question is that a parametric test is a type of test where there are certain assumptions. Assumptions of normality, assumptions of randomness, or normal distribution assumption. This type of assumptions are there. So these, those type of tests are called as parametric tests. Example your t test your z test these are all examples of parametric test why it is parametric because some assumptions are there but basically dear students data is not normal variances are not normal that's why when there is no normality or when the equality of the variances are not there but we try to test those type of data through a test statistic those type of procedure of those type of test statistics are called as non-parametric where there is no normality assumptions, randomness assumptions, or where there is no normal distribution of the population assumptions. So dear students, your non-parametric test based on nominal or ordinal measurements. Please write down this line. This might be one more question. Your non-parametric tests are based on nominal or ordinal measurements. Okay? So this is the basic difference between parametric and non-parametric test statistics. Or types of test statistics you can see. Then question arises. Selection of test of significance. Selection of test of significance. This is the heading of this particular but I can say, write down two lines here. The selection of test of significance based on, please write down, be careful about this. The selection of test significance based on, point number A, which type of test you will use? It depends on three factors, three parameters, we can say. A, number of samples, number of samples hyphen one sample two sample or k number of samples if the number of sample differs then test differs 
that's why i told you the test of significance based on number of samples this is point number a and samples might be one two or k samples b samples are independent or not this is point number two samples are independent or not i will use all this concept while i will show you how to solve a number so be, be careful about this particular point samples are independent or not c measurement scale <coughs> whether the measurement is nominal ordinal interval or in a ratio format whether the measurement is in nominal format or ordinal measurement or interval format or ratio format this will tell you which type of test we are going to use okay dear students so this is something about the selection of test of significance then comes about your errors in hypothesis testing counts less counts less am i audible dear student am i audible or not please make your audio on switch off mode yes okay so then students we have to read about errors in hypothesis testing dear students i told you students of post graduation in economics of osu they are of 165 cm height on an average i told you okay dear students i repeat i repeat errors in hypothesis testing dear students suppose i am formulating a hypothesis like the average height of the students of students in economics of osu are 165 cm you told me sir i am 155 cm height somebody told me sir i am 170 cm in height then my statement might be wrong so to prove my statement whether my statement is true or not basing upon the fact we have to test it so whenever we are making a statement we may commit a mistake we may commit an error so there is every possibility of incorrect decision or error and in hypothesis testing also we have to see this particular error there are two types there are two types of error while testing a non hypothesis got the point dear students i told you there are two types of error while testing a non hypothesis be careful about this point there are two types of error while testing a non hypothesis so here i can write down the decision here i can write down the state of nature state of nature here i can write down when x0 each true here i can write down when x0 is false okay dear student see the decision except x0 when x0 is true except x0 when except x0 when x0 is true it is a correct decision or not it is a correct decision correct decision with confidence i can write down like this correct decision with confidence except x0 when x0 is false it is an error so i can write down this as type 2 error are you getting my point dear student so this x0 is true or except x0 when x0 is true this is 1 minus alpha and if our type 2 error is what is type 2 error when x0 is false accept it it is type 2 error i can denote it as beta 
What the point, dear student? Okay. Here I can write down. Reject x zero. When x zero is true. So this is an error. So I can write down. I one error. This is your alpha. Reject x zero when x zero is false. It is a correct decision. So I can write down one minus zero. Got this point or not? Got this point or not, dear students? Please answer through text or through thumb impression. Got this point or not? Type one error and type two error. Accept H zero. Okay, I am repeating it. Here I have written this particular column decision. Here I have written statement of the nature. Statement of nature: X zero is true and X zero is false. Accept H zero when X zero is true. That is natural. So it is a correct decision. But accept H zero when H zero is false. It is an error. We are committing a mistake. And this particular error is called as type two error. Denoted by beta. Okay, dear student, you see this. Reject x zero when x zero is true. This is also mistake. So this type of error is called as type one error, denoted by alpha. Whereas when x zero is false, we are rejecting it. So it is a correct decision, denoted by one minus beta. Okay, dear student. Then you can ask me what is type one error and what is type two error. What is type one error and what is type two error? You will pass this question in the examination. Be careful about this. Please write down type one error. Please write down the heading type one error. Please write down the probability of making type one error. The probability of making type one error referred to as The probability of making type one error refer to as the level of significance bracketed alpha. Bracketed alpha. Okay, dear student. The complement of type one error. The complement of type one error measures the. Probability of measures the probability of not rejecting a true null hypothesis. Refer to as refer to as level of significance or confidence level. Refer to as level of confidence or confidence level. One mark, two mark, three mark. Any question can be there. Okay, dear students, can I down heading type two error? What is type two error? It is accepting. It is accepting false null hypothesis. It is accepting false null hypothesis denoted by beta. Denoted by beta. When null hypothesis is false, and if you accept it, then you are committing type two error. However, both alpha and beta cannot be reduced simultaneously. Both alpha and beta. Sounds less. Someone has written sounds less. Raju, which is continue. Am I audible or not? Please, dear students, tell me. Both alpha and beta cannot be reduced simultaneously. Okay. Then, dear students, choice of probability distribution or Pell statistic. You see the tree diagram so that we can clear your doubt.
where I can write down choice of the test statistic. Okay, so here I can say this is no, this is yes. Here I can say two types. Let me reverse it. Choice of test statistic. Here I can write down one caption like this. Is the population normal? First question. Which type of test to be used? Suppose you have seen a set of data. Which type of test will be used there? How to decide it? You can know this from this particular tree diagram. So be careful about this. Is the population normal? First question. Then, if it is no, what to do? And if it is yes, what to do? Okay, dear student. Then, I can say in this way that if it is no, you can ask another question. Is the sample size is the sample size that is n greater than or equal to 30? See the question. Is the sample size n that is n greater than or equal to 30? Okay? Then there are two options. No and yes. Okay, then if it is no, if it is no, if it is not greater than 30, then what will happen? Use a non parametric test. Use a non parametric test. Okay, dear students, if it is greater than equal to 30, then what you have to do? Use Z test. Then, is the population normal? If it is yes, then we have to ask another question. What is the question? Is the population standard deviation? Is the population standard deviation known? Is the population standard deviation sigma, we can say, known, known to you? This is the question. Is the population standard deviation, that is sigma, known to you? Then, there are two answers. No, another is yes. Okay? If it is not known, if it is not known, if it is known, then what to do? Use t-test. And if it is known to you, if it is known to you, then use z-test. Your syllabus is saying about the f-test and chi-square test. Those two tests are non-parametric test. Those two tests are non-parametric test. Okay? So, what is Z test? Z test is equal to Z is equal to X bar minus mu. This mu is your population mean. X bar is your sample mean divided by standard deviation divided by root over of N. Or I can write down X bar minus mu divided by S root over of n. This is the formula of z. z test. Then another thing I have told you, t test. t is equal to, or I can write down small t, it is written, t is equal to x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation divided by root over of 
okay dear students t is equal to x bar minus mu by standard error this is also called as standard deviation sigma by root over of n okay dear students should we go to calculation part now these are the knots and bolts with which you have to solve a particular number are you getting my point dear student okay so let me proceed further case number 1 should i clear the blackboard now please say yes or no practicing okay so that you can solve any problem in the examination and you can solve any problem during the period of your research okay now let me explain about case study or case number 1 What is case number one? Case one, it is in your materials also. We can find out. What we are going to do? Hypothesis testing about a single population mean. Hypothesis testing about a single population mean. Okay. small sample data you can say so case number 1 is what is the case number 1 normal population with no standard deviation normal population with no standard deviation this means testing the non hypothesis this means testing the null hypothesis h0 when mu is equal to mu is equal to mu0 okay here please write down here the random sample of size n small n here the random sample of size n is taken from the normal population with known standard deviation there might be a question on non standard deviation also there might be a question for example large sample in this way some problems you will face so this is the random sample size n taken from normal population and non standard deviation under the assumptions that h0 is equal h0 is true under the assumptions h0 is true mu is equal to x bar that is equal to mu 0 that means the sample mean is equal to the population mean or here i can say here x 0 is equal to mu or mu 0 i can write down mu minus mu 0 is equal to 0 And what is the meaning of this? Meaning of this is H one. That is the alternative hypothesis is mu is not equal to mu zero. If mu is equal to mu zero, it is your non hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis will be opposite of that. That means mu is not equal to mu zero. Okay, dear student. Then so the test statistics kindly bear with me because these are all. critical part that you have to know these are the critical part that you have to know because i am ready to teach you i am ready to explain you 10 times to your students if you are not following tell me so that i will repeat it again and again so the test statistics so the test statistics here j is equal to x bar minus mu by standard deviation of j or i can also write down x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation or root over of n what does it mean what is the meaning of this what the numerator is saying what the denominator is saying here the numerator is saying that the sample mean how far it is different from the population mean in absolute sense 
Are you getting my point, dear students? How can the simple mean is different from the population mean in absolute sense? What is the denominator? The denominator is saying about standard deviation by root over n. What does it mean? This means that it is the standard error of the mean. Okay. Again, I am showing you. Someone said video is not clear. But it's clear. I can see it's clear. Okay. Video is not clear. Someone said that person is saying from the beginning that the video is not clear and audio is also not clear. You see, you have to be checking it. Okay. So please mute your audio. Network problem. Okay. You might be facing some network problem, dear students. If video is not clear and if I am not audible. Okay. So, there the test statistics there is equal to x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation of z or x bar minus mu divided by standard error. This is the absolute difference between sample mean and the population mean. This is the numerator and the denominator is saying about the standard error. So what to do with this? What to do with this? Dear students, if the alternative hypothesis H A, here I am writing instead of H1, that is, if mu is greater than mu0, then H0 will be rejected. Then H0 will be rejected. Or the rejection region. I have shown you the rejection region, the two term acceptance region, the middle of the sample distribution curve. Your alternative hypothesis is saying if mu is greater than mu zero, then h zero will be rejected. How to show it through the diagram? How to show it through the graph? Dear yes, students, the rejection region is right down. The rejection region takes the form of takes the form of z greater than z alpha okay this is called this is called upper tail test this is called upper tail test on the other hand on the other hand, for H A, if mu is less than mu zero, then Z becomes negative. This will be negative. Okay? Z becomes negative. Full stop. The rejection region takes the form of the rejection region takes the form of J is less than minus J alpha. J is less than minus J alpha. This is lower tail test. T A I L E D. This is lower tail test. One is upper tail test, and this is lower tail test. Dear students, these two are called upper tail test and lower tail test. These two are called two tail test. These two are called two tail test. Okay, dear student. Now, coming to an example of your study material, page number seven of your study material. Question number one. What has been given to us? The example is like this. The example is like this. Your how to codify it first. If you can able to codify a particular Problem, then you can solve it easily. You see the number how it is saying us. A motor car company claims that 
a car's average speed is 35 mile per gallon of petrol average speed of 35 kilo mile means that is coming then it is saying in a sample of 100 cars it was found that average is 32 mile 32 mile per gallon okay if the speed is normally distributed with standard deviation of 4 meter per gallon, test the claim at 5% level and 1% level of significance. This is the question. So how to qualify it, dear student? Point number one, what is a zero is saying? A zero is saying that Average speed is equal to 35 kilometer per hour per gallon. So H0 that is mu is equal to 35. So what will be H1? Your H1 will be, or I can write down H A or the alternative hypothesis. Mu will not be equal to 35. That is your alternative hypothesis. Okay, how to test it? The data test here we will use. Because it is normally distributed, so here I can write out J is equal to x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation root divided by standard deviation to the power of n. Okay? This is the formula. But how to make a decision here? How to make a decision? The question is asking you to test it. Reject S0. If J is less than equal to minus J zero point five five percent of C. Okay, student. So what is the value? This is the tabulated value. This is the calculated value. What is the tabulated value? The tabulated value is the value given on the J S table. We will provide you the table of statistics value table, F statistics value table, E statistics value table, some table are there at the end of every statistic book, even through that also can download it. That is your table value R, which is given in the format of a table already. But what is the calculated value? What we are calculating the formula, that is the calculated value. So, dear students, here we will reject no hypothesis if the calculated value is less than equal to the Z0.05. That is, it is the value of the Z at a personal level of significance. Am I audible and beautiful, dear students? Okay. Am I audible and visible? Please say yes or no. Please say yes or no. No, sir. Is that clear? No, clear. Looking
Sir, sir, you are not audible. Sir, it is visible. I am not audible. It's audible but not visible. Sir, audible but not. And now it is visible. Am I audible? Voice is breaking. Voice is breaking. Hello. I am audible now. Am I audible now? Sir, please say to me. Yes, audible, but not picture is not coming. Can I continue, sir? Okay. Here I tell you how to make a decision. Reject at zero. Let me less than equal to minus at zero point zero five. What is the calculated value of that? At five percent level of significance, this is one point nine six. This is one point. Now I can say if it is one percent level of significance, then the value of that will be equal to two point five seven five. This was the tabulated value. Now, if we calculate this, then this should be equal to the value of J will be equal to audible clear. Whether I am audible or not? I am not audible, sir. I am not audible, not clear. The voice is not clear. Voice is not clear. Uh, it's breaking. Even the uh, pictures are breaking. Actually, the rate is okay. Everything is okay. There might be some technical problem. I am going to save. Okay, let's start. What is happening? Let us see. So here the value of J. J is equal to 32 minus 35 divided by. Two root of hundred. The value is equal to minus seven point five. Okay. Now I get it. Since minus seven point five is less than minus one point nine six. One point nine six five percent level of significance since minus seven point five is less than minus one point nine six at zero will be rejected at zero point zero five level of significance. Okay. Similarly, minus seven point zero five. Also less than minus two point five seven five. A one percent level of significance. Here also S zero will be rejected at two point zero two level of significance. And that and the second is six and up. Is that at this level of significance? That is at one percent level. And one percent level. This is how we can go for a test 
that is normal population with non standard deviation normal population with non standard deviation audible or not please dear students can i audible or not are you following the point or not you said to me whether you are following the point or not please respond and from starting of the solution could not understand due to voice breaking which part sir what they are saying is the solution part they are not able to understand because voice is breaking and the picture is also cracking okay let me repeat let so, me so no uh, what i suggest is since time is also over and there is okay. some connectivity issue can we okay. continue in next session with okay. a small summary of this because that would be better okay still high value is it clear so let me continue this particular uh, so five this particular yeah there is 10 minutes left so i can repeat it ha huh. okay sir let me this is a question relating to normal population with no standard deviation normal population distribution with no standard deviation i told you the question is A motor car company claims that car's average speed is 35 kilometers per hour. Oh, this question. So, what is the question? That means average mu is equal to 35. For example, in a simple hundred car, it was found that average is actually 32 miles per gallon of petrol. So n is equal to 100 here. N is equal to 100 here. Now it was found that actually 32 miles per gallon of petrol. If the speed is normally distributed with standard deviation, 32 miles per gallon of petrol. This is the sample mean. This is the sample mean. What is the population mean? The population means first statement. A motor car company claims that car's average speed is 35 kilometer miles, 35 miles per gallon of petrol. That is the population. Now, population means 35. Sample means 32. N is equal to 100, and the standard deviation is equal to 4 miles per gallon of lead. Petrol. So these four are known to us. How to test the claim of the motor car company at five percent level and at one percent level? That is the question. Now, this is the population we. I can write down the null hypothesis that at zero, that is equal to mu equal to thirty-five. That means alternative hypothesis that mu will not be equal to thirty-five. So here we have to use the JRT formula. x bar minus mu plus r division of root over of n. That means how to make a decision. The decision says reject x zero if z is less than equal to minus z point zero five or minus z zero point zero one for one level of significance. So here I can say there are two values. One is calculated value, another is tabulated value. Tabulated value is that value. The value of the z at high percent level given through the table already in the book. Tabulated value of z at one percent level of significance means given through the table already in the book. So that is the tabulated value one can find it out through the z table, or it will be written on the question itself. What is the value? What is the tabulated value of z at one percent level of significance? And at five percent level of significance, our duty is to find out calculated value of z, and we have to make a comparison of the calculated value of z with the tabulated value. Okay, our calculated value of z is equal to minus seven point five. So what to do now? Make a comparison here. Here minus seven five is less than minus one point nine six. But this is the case. So if it is Less than minus 1.96. That means here we are going to reject the 
at zero. That means the debt of the company is not established. Secondly, at one percent level of significance, the tabulated value also equal to two point five seven five. Here the calculated value that we got minus seven point five again less than minus two point five seven five. As a result of which, here also at zero is going to be rejected. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that the data is significant enough to reject at zero at both level of significance. That means the company claim is not established. This is how we explain about normal population with known standard deviation. Okay? Then we will go for the large sample test. What is the large sample test? When the number of items, when the number of samples is more than what I have given through the table, more than 30. So here, generally we say it is more than 40. So in the, in the question we can say, how to write down the test for a large sample. Then we will go to case 3, population standard deviation or population when the standard deviation is not known. How to use a t-test, p-value test, power test, etc. Let us explain now. Question number two, we get large sample test. What is a large sample test? Please write down one line here. The time is over. Sir, yes, it is getting close to the time. And since the voice is breaking and the picture is also cracking, I believe we should take it in a separate session. Okay, sir. So, actually, oh, we, will, here? Uh, we will stop here. I would like to thank you. And the students were also quite patiently hearing. I was observing. I am sure they would have got a lot from this session, starting from hypothesis testing, null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, how to write a hypothesis. And they would have also understood the conventional significance level, that is 1% level, 5% level, 10% level, and the acceptant regions, and how it is different from the critical region, and how to choose the different test statistics, both for parametric test as well as for the non-parametric test. And they would have also understood the concept of uh, null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. The uh, the type 1 error and type 2 error connected to it. Uh, I am sure the learner would have got lots of benefit out of this. This is very vital for a students of economics because throughout their career, they would be using it. That is why, uh, but however, the second part, which is large sample size, uh, they have understood. Then the population standard deviation, the jet test, and uh, how to choose different type of test uh, when the population mean is known, standard deviation is known, the service is unknown. It is clear. However, when it comes to the uh, mathematical part, I, I am sure uh, you won't mind. We will be repeating it again because there is some network issue and then it would be for the benefit of the learner. We shall resume the session next to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I hope that we'll repeat some part what you have not already might not have followed. So in the succeeding session, we'll go for the large sample test, power uh, test, that is your, uh, then p-value test, we'll go for that, then app test, and the chi-square test also. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Continue. Uh, so, learners, so close the session. So, if you have any doubts, you can still keep it and we will resume the doubts in the next session, not an issue. Okay, just go through the content. I think Sari is disconnected. Okay, thank you.
Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you, ma'am.